This is 5-77. And this problem, you have a steel shaft has a diameter of 40, millis 40 millimeters through here. It's going to be fixed at ends A and B. It's going to be subjected to a couple right here. Um, it has a maximum shear. You want to find the maximum shear stress between A and C, and between C and B. And it has a shear modulus of 75 uh, gigapascals. Uh, first thing to do would be to draw some type of free body diagram here. So I'll just draw a line here representing the shaft. Okay. Uh, this is creating a torque here. So we'll draw what the torque would look like. And it's going around this way. Like this. We'll let this be point C. So this would be trying to turn it back this way here. And this would be trying to turn it back this way here, down here. So this is B. This is A. And you could draw a free by, this is your free by diagram. So the secret to this would be that the twist, the angular twist between this point and this point and between this point and this point, the angular twist here has to be the same. So we do know that. So let's state everything we do know. If I look here and I take the sum of the torques, then I know this object's not going to start spinning, so I say the sum of the torques must equal to zero. So we can say that t torque at A plus the torque at B minus the couple and the easiest way to do the couple here is just take the uh, the moment arm here, and that would be 3,000 kilonewtons. And you get your choice. The, if you're going to do a couple, you can do 3,000 times the uh, excuse me times the total length of this, which is going to be 0.1, or you could take 3,000 times um, 0.05 plus 3,000 times 0.05. It's going to give you the same thing. So I'll just take this times 0.1 and we'll set that equal to 0. Okay, and we can also say that the angular twist, we'll call it theta, between C relative to A must be the same twist as from C relative to B. which makes sense because this angular here, if this thing is going to rotate two degrees this direction, so relative to A and from relative to B must be the same. So we know the equation for angular twist is just TL over JG. So the torque times the length divided by the product of the polar moment inertia times the um, the shear modulus is going to give us angular twist. So we'll go ahead and put these values in. And we know the torque at A. We don't know what that is right now. Times this distance here. And we can just put in 400. Now we know the J and the G are the same. There's no reason really to put the numerical values in. You can. Um, they're just going to cancel out. Okay, so what you end up getting, if you simplify this, right, obviously this would cancel out here, would be you get 400 TB torque at B is equal to 600, let me right, fix that, sorry, 400 torque at A, if I can read my own writing, times the torque at B. And we can solve for either TA or TB. TA would equal to 6 over 4 TB, which is equal to 1.5 TB. All right, so now we can go back to this equation right here and put in TA, so we'd get 1.5 
TB plus TB. Move this to the other side. Give me 300. So I'll get 2.5 TB is equal to 300. Solve for TB. 300 divided by 2.5, that gives me 120. So the torque at B would equal to 120. And then we know if this is 120, then TA would have to be 180. And let me go back and put my uh, units in. We're kilonewtons here. We're dollar, we have millimeters here. So that's going to give me newtons times meters if, if I do my unit conversions. Okay, so this is the important part here. Now we have the torques. And now the easy part is to find the, sh the uh, shear stress. And the shear stress, again, is just going to be T times maximum radius divided by the polar moment inertia. So we can say the torque at A is going to be 180 times the radius and this is a 40 millimeter so we'll do our conversions that's going to give me 0 0.02 divide by the uh, polar moment inertia which is always going to be pi divided by 2 times the radius to the fourth power and we run that value there and that's going to give us a value of about 14.3 megapascals we do it make it a little bit better we do it for the torque at B sorry not the torque at B, sorry the shear stress at B is going to equal to the torque at B which is going to be 120 times the max radius divided by the polar moment inertia and that gives us 9.55 megapascals And that is it. So fairly straightforward problem. Um, the only th challenging thing, it's really not that challenging, is realizing that the angular uh, twists between here and here and between here and here have to be the same. That's going to allow you to find the torques at A and torques at B. All right, best of luck.